if you listen to Ain't Too Proud to Beg, Losing You, and those songs, those songs are is so similar to gospel songs. Hold on, once you would rain, they tell the story. And all types of were just a part of the David Ruffin lifestyle. He was in, in, involved when they went to Europe. They had uh, uh, the hallucinogens. It has been nine years since Jimmy Ruffin died, and for many of us, it was just like every other death. But what if I tell you there was more to that than we all though? What if there were more sinister elements at play? Born Jimmy Lee Ruffin on May 7, 1936, in the rural heart of Collinsville, Mississippi, his early life was steeped in the kind of hardship and resilience that would later echo through his music. Over these years, he still had to fight that He had all kind of extremes, but he was begging, you know, and the guys gave him a little bit of money just to get rid of him. The son of Ophelia and Eli Ruffin, a sharecropper and Baptist minister, Jimmy's world was one of profound simplicity and deep-rooted family values. The absence of electricity in their home was a minor detail in a life filled with the richness of gospel music and the tight-knit community of their church. There will come a day and I will tell the whole story. Certain little things, you know. Sometimes uh, people want to travel one certain way, someone else wants to travel another way. Interestingly, the Ruffin household was always alive with music. Despite the tragic loss of their mother just 10 months after the birth of his brother David, Jimmy and his siblings found solace and expression through song. Under their father's strict but guiding hand, they formed a gospel group, the Spectacular Triumph Four, which toured locally, opening for gospel legends like Mahalia Jackson and the Five Blind Boys of Mississippi. There were six of us without a guitar player Cornelius Grant. And we traveled in that station wagon for about two years. And I think that's how the temptation came together so much. As Jimmy grew, so did his aspirations. Yet, his path to stardom was anything but direct. The late 1950s saw him enlist in the military, a move that, while far from his musical ambitions, inadvertently set the stage for his future. It was during his service that Jimmy's talent truly began to shine, his voice captivating not just his fellow servicemen, but also himself, as he began to see the potential in his gift. Upon his return to civilian life, Jimmy was at a crossroads. The pull of music was strong, but the uncertainty of a career in such a volatile industry was a daunting prospect. It was his brother David, already making waves in Detroit's burgeoning music scene, who convinced Jimmy to take the leap. Moving to Detroit, Jimmy stepped into a world that would transform him from a reluctant singer to a Motown legend. Jimmy Ruffin's journey from the fields of Mississippi to the studios of Motown was anything but conventional. The military had offered structure and a sense of purpose, but it was music that called to his soul. Encouraged by those who recognized his talent, he made the pivotal decision to pursue singing, a choice that would forever alter the course of his life. Returning to civilian life, Jimmy found himself drawn to Detroit, the burgeoning heart of the Motown music revolution. It was here, in this city of industry and innovation, that Jimmy's path would cross with some of the most influential figures in music history. His brother David, already making a name for himself, introduced Jimmy to the vibrant world of Motown, a place where talent like his could not only be recognized, but celebrated. Jimmy's early days at Motown were marked by a mix of excitement and uncertainty. Signed to the label's Miracle Records subsidiary, he released his first single, Don't Feel Sorry For Me, which, despite his own reservations about the song, marked the beginning of his professional recording career. This period was a time of learning and growth for Jimmy, who, despite the challenges, remained committed to finding his voice in the crowded landscape of Motown artists. The struggle to stand out was real. Jimmy worked various jobs, from the automotive factories that defined Detroit to performing at local clubs, all while lending his voice to background vocals for other Motown acts. It was a testament to his determination and resilience, qualities that would come to define his career. His efforts to carve out a solo career were further complicated by the presence of his brother David in The Temptations, a group that represented the pinnacle of Motown's success. Yet it was Jimmy's unique voice and perspective that eventually set him apart. 
His breakthrough came with the release of What Becomes of the Broken Hearted, a song that resonated with audiences worldwide and secured his place in music history. This hit was a poignant reflection of Jimmy's own experiences, a testament to the power of perseverance and the universal language of music. So now, in the world of Motown music during the 1960s, Jimmy Ruffin was right in the middle of a critical moment, not only for his own career, but also for the famous group, The Temptations. As Jimmy worked to establish his solo career within the Motown framework, a unique opportunity presented itself. The Temptations, already on the brink of stardom, were undergoing changes in their lineup. Jimmy, with his distinctive voice and undeniable talent, was briefly considered as a potential member of the group. This moment was not just a crossroads for Jimmy, but also a testament to the intertwined fates of the Ruffin Brothers and the Temptations. So Jimmy's path to stardom hit a crossroads when he almost joined the Temptations, but a mix of factors like the group's dynamics, Motown's plans, and David's budding solo career changed the game. However, this setback didn't dampen Jimmy's spirit. If anything, it fueled his determination to make his mark in the music scene. He learned some crucial lessons along the way about perseverance and staying true to himself. Now, the Ruffin brothers' careers were tightly interwoven, yet distinct. Their relationship was a blend of support and friendly competition, which played out against the vibrant backdrop of Motown's heyday. Jimmy's breakthrough came in the 60s with the iconic track What Becomes of the Broken Hearted, a soulful anthem that struck a chord with listeners worldwide. This song wasn't just a hit, it was a testament to Jimmy's talent and resilience, proving that he could touch hearts with his music. As Jimmy's star rose, he crafted a unique sound within the Motown universe, exploring themes of love and loss with authenticity Hits like, I've Passed This Way Before, showcased his emotional depth and vocal prowess. But Jimmy faced challenges, too. Motown's focus on its biggest stars sometimes left him fighting for attention, and the evolving music scene demanded adaptability. Yet Jimmy stayed true to his music, captivating audiences with his electrifying live performances, especially in the UK. Now, Jimmy's story isn't complete without mentioning his brother David, the legendary lead singer of The Temptations. Their bond, a mix of support and healthy competition, shaped Jimmy's journey profoundly. Their collaboration on the album I Am My Brother's Keeper was a poignant reflection of their shared experiences in the music industry. Although the album showcased their remarkable harmony, it didn't reach the commercial heights they'd hoped for. In the 1970s, Jimmy's music career changed. He became more popular in the UK, so he spent more time there singing and making records. People in the UK really liked his style, especially his soul music. Songs like Hold On to My Love became hits, and when he worked with Robin Gibb from the Bee Gees, it made him even more famous. But at the same time, Jimmy's brother David had a tough life. He struggled with personal problems and had trouble with his music career. Sadly, David died in 1991. This was really hard for Jimmy, because not only did he lose his brother, but also his music partner. After David's death, Jimmy started speaking out against he wanted to use his pain to warn others about the dangers of especially in the music industry. As the 20th century was ending, Jimmy's career slowed down a bit, but he kept making music. He moved to the UK where people still loved his music. Even though he didn't have as many big hits, his fans still supported him a lot. Jimmy's music wasn't just loved in the US and the UK. People all over the world enjoyed it. His songs connected with people because they were full of emotion and told stories. He was good at changing his music style to fit the times, but he always stayed true to himself. Later in his career, Jimmy talked more about important issues, like use. He wanted to help others avoid the pain his family went through. His message of hope and strength became just as important as his music. When Jimmy passed away in 2014, it was a big loss for the music world. People from everywhere shared how much his music meant to them. Jimmy's life showed that no matter where you start, music can change lives and bring people together. His legacy lives on through the emotions in his songs, inspiring artists and fans for years to come. That's all for the video, folks. Thanks for watching.